Today, I want to talk about what I consider to be my greatest strength as an engineer, but my greatest weakness as a guy who's trying to actually build products and real stuff. And that is what I like to call terminal rebuilding. And what I mean by this is my tendency to build the same thing and build my projects over and over and over again with new technologies. And I think this really ties into my tendency to constantly try and constantly mess with and constantly try and learn new technologies, new frameworks, databases libraries, all these different things. As you can probably tell by the history of my channel, I'm constantly messing with new stuff. I constantly like, I constantly am trying new stuff, messing with new stuff, figuring out how I can better solve, solve my problems, do this, do that. And I think in a lot of ways from an engineering standpoint, that's a really good thing. This video was originally going to come out last week under the title of why web development has gotten so difficult. What I was going to talk about in that video was going to be the abundance of libraries and frameworks and technologies and different things we can use to build our products, the different ways we can solve problems. Realistically, if the problem that we're trying to solve is we want to fetch some data from a server server, serve it to our user and sell a product. There are a bajillion different ways we can do that. There are a million different databases, frameworks, libraries, authentication systems, caching methods, hosting methods, deployment architectures. There's a bajillion different ways you can do this and a million different permutations of how you do that. And I think that is an incredible thing, but I also really think that that is part of why a lot of new people in the web development space, a lot of people who don't know all this stuff, find it so difficult and intimidating to get into. It's a lot when you don't know what's going on and you see React, Svelte, Vue, Solid, all these different things, all these different ways of doing it. But within each of these frameworks, there's different ways to do things in there. Within React, you could do things in an SPA within a React app, or you could do things in a full stack environment in a Next.js app, or you could use a Next.js app with a separate backend and do some caching and do some separate backend stuff there. There's a million different ways you can do this and it's really overwhelming. And I totally understand why people sort of say, that web development has gotten really hard. Now, I think that if you know where to start and you know where to look, there's it's definitely very easy to learn the fundamentals and get into it and do all that stuff. But without a clear and concise path from zero to one, it's really, really difficult. Without a clear and concise path from zero to one, it can be extraordinary, extraordinarily difficult. And I totally, I really see that and I feel that. And I think the whole impetus for that video was when I was talking to my friends and my co-founders of InsiderViz, and we were talking about the technologies that we wanted to use to do some updates to the site. And at the time we were talking about rebuilding it, and we'll get to that in a second, which was the core of this video now. But when we were talking about these different technologies, I brought up Drizzle and I brought up Edge because I'm like, yeah, we should leverage those. We should do that because that's a great fit for our site. We're just fetching some data, sending it down. Edge runtime could save us a bunch of money. And they were like, bro, what the heck are you talking about? They had no idea what any of this was and they didn't get what I was even talking about with all this stuff. And these are not bad engineers. These are not newbie engineers. These are brilliant battle-tested engineers who all of the beautiful front-end work there you see, all those graphs, all the D3, all the really complicated front-end stuff, that was them. That wasn't me. These are extraordinary engineers. I would consider them far, far better than myself. But they don't know all this stuff because they're not terminally plugged into all this stuff like I am. They're not constantly looking at tech Twitter and YouTube and all the different frameworks and not trying to constantly optimize their to-do apps and do all this stuff. They just kind of, they're more, they just kind of want to solve problems and just do stuff and they just have a way of doing things and they like doing it. They're also very anti-abstraction and that's a whole nother video for another time. But the general point I want to make is that I totally see how difficult that has really become. But I think the other side to that is that, yeah, there's there's a lot there, but I think that the fact that there is so much there is a really good thing. And I think that I'm very, very happy that there's so much there. And I think that open source has resulted in us having this extraordinary ecosystem and constant innovation and constant pushing forward where next it's felt and all these different frameworks, they're pushing each other forward to such a degree. It's amazing. It's amazing how good these are getting. Edge is amazing. Drizzle took some of the beauty of Prisma, took a lot of the great stuff they did, and then they fixed a lot of the problems that Prisma had. Prisma had some problems with Edge. It had some problems with it was too far away from SQL. It was really heavyweight. It had all this stuff. And then Drizzle comes in and solves all that. Now we look at Prisma. Prisma is solving all those problems too. Prisma is now 
now focusing on getting better at serverless, getting better on the edge, offering more methods to do these things. And it's amazing. I love that we have all this stuff. But bringing all of this back to what I was initially talking about with terminal rebuilding, all of these options can lead people like me who really love all of this stuff to making some, I don't want to call it questionable, but some interesting decisions. And like I said, last week we were talking about rebuilding Insider Viz, and ultimately we've decided against that. And we're just going to use the foundation we have and we're going to build on top of it. And we're just going to focus on making it better instead of rewriting everything for the upteenth time. I'll double check this in the editing phase, but I'm pretty sure that I have built Insider Viz at least a dozen times. I have built the back end in Nest.js, I have built it in Spring Boot, I have built it in Express, I have built it in a Next app, I have built it in multiple different frameworks of Go. I have built the front end. We did the first front end in Vue. We did the second front end in Nuxt. We did the third front end in Next.js. We've done it in a bunch of different stuff, and we were about to do it again in SvelteKit, but we've ultimately decided against that. And we're just going to stick with the devil we know and Next 12 pages directory and just make a good product first and foremost and not worry about that too much. And that, I think, is a very double edged sword sort of thing because. Listening to that, those of you who are more product-minded are probably cringing out of your mind. You're just thinking you're a moron. You've rebuilt the exact same thing over and over again. What is wrong with you? And I think a lot of what, what the reason why I did that was general lack of experience. But I think one of the things that I got out of doing all that stuff was I learned a ton. And that's why I said at the outset of this, I think it's one of my greatest strengths that I have this terminal rebuilding problem where I'm just constantly trying to do stuff better and I'm trying to take all my projects and I'm trying to bring them to the newest thing. I think it's made me a much better engineer. It's led me to learn new frameworks, learn new technologies. It has allowed me to gain a really solid understanding of the the fundamental concepts that connect all of these to the point where I feel like at this point I can pick up a new framework really quickly and just get going with it because I get the base underlying concepts. It really did not take me long at all to pick up SvelteKit. SvelteKit I was productive with within like a day. And I feel like within, if I wanted to go learn Vue or Nuxt or Solid or anything like this, I could probably get productive within a couple days. I know Svelte gets really simple and easy, and obviously going from React to Svelte is a pretty easy transition because there's a lot less nonsense in Svelte than there is in React. I still like React. I'm not an anti-React guy, but you know, state can be goofy and you know, it has its problems. That's not for today. But with all of that said, I also didn't really... How do I put this? The project got completed, but it's not getting built upon. And I was talking to one of the guys from my university, our XIR mentor from the accelerator program we're in through my university and all that stuff. And we were talking about compounding. And I sort of realized that we have never really given Insider Viz, or I've never really given any of my projects time to com compound. I look at some of the really big, incredible projects out there, like Cal.com or like like any other big open source thing, these repos have thousands upon thousands of commits. Ours, I think the most commits I have in like, I think the biggest insider of his repo has like a little over a thousand or something like that. So nothing compared to any of these big ones. They, a lot of my repos and a lot of these projects, they only get up to like 50, 60 commits and then I move on to the next thing. And that's a problem because over time you can compound and you can make more and more and you build on top and you build this foundation that you can expand upon on, and I'm never letting that happen because I'm constantly rebuilding stuff. So that led me to the decision here to not rebuild it. We're just going to take what we have. Is it flawed? Yes. Did I make some goofy architectural decisions? Yes. And we're going to fix those. We're going to switch it so that instead of have proxying to like a separate Golang backend and fetching like fetching the forms from the Golang backend and then sending those to the Next.js backend and then to the front end, we're going to cut out the Golang backend. We're just going to go straight to our database from the Next.js backend, especially since we're leveraging static building. There is zero reason not to do this. The whole architecture was just goofy. But, you know, I learned a lot from this process and we're going to take what we've got and we're going to expand upon it. It's a Next.js pages directory project. It's not app directory. It's not the newest, coolest thing, but we can solve the problem with it. And I think I need to get better at just, you know, solving the problem and just being OK with that. But 
I do want to say for those who are newer and those who are trying to learn all this stuff, and I've had some people like DM me and ask, like, you know, what are your advice for newer or trying to learn or people I talk to at university here um, who are younger and learning like me is, you know, what do you recommend to learn? And I tell them just constantly build new stuff, you know. Rebuilding Insider Viz a ton from a business standpoint was definitely not an advantageous move, but from a career and knowledge standpoint, I think it was enormous. I got a really great job last fall. Last uh, last fall, I got a job at an app agency, not as a junior dev, but as a full dev, and I've had a great relationship with that company. They're awesome. I've loved working there, and the reason I got that is because when I applied, I sent them Insider Viz, and I'm like, yeah, this is what I built. I've built it a bunch of different times. I've learned this and that, and this is how I built it. And they were really impressed because most people just build like to-do apps, and they don't ever really go through the process of actually building something more real, and they don't ever go through the process of iterating a bunch, and they don't have the depth of knowledge that you gain from trying all these different things because as you try all these different things, you're going to learn a ton. There are so many different concepts that you will just run into while you're doing it, and you'll get get a lot better. So I think from an engineering standpoint, rebuilding and constantly messing with stuff is a very good thing. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not a good thing. And also, just from a sheer passion standpoint, I think it's a good thing. Fundamentally, part of the reason why I do this is just because I really like it. I don't sit there reading tech Twitter or whatever and looking at new framework releases and all these things. I don't do it because I feel like I'm compelled to, and if I don't do it, I'm going to lose my job or whatever. I'm sure I'm fine. I do it because I'm interested, because I love solving these problems, and because I think tech is so cool. It's a passion thing, and I think if you have that passion, that's a beautiful thing. You should enjoy that, and you should expand upon that, but I think what I'm learning and what I want to do is I want to take these projects that I'm working on. I want to take them a lot more seriously. I want to let them compound and let them expand and let them build, and then go make some more side projects and do those little weekend things and little smaller things that are a great showcase and a great place to use these other frameworks. You know, recently we did the Svelkit Superbase app, the little Enceladus one thing. It was just a very basic wrapper around OpenAI's DALI API. But I think doing more of that would be great. I think do more of that, you know, we can try out more frameworks, do more stuff there, learn more, and there's more to gain from all of that stuff. And then when the time comes for the next big project, then I'll bring in SvelteKit. The next time I need to start a new front end from scratch for a website, you can bet your ass I'm going to be picking SvelteKit. But for now, I'm going to keep my next 12 pages directory. We've already solved the problem. We've got the foundation. Let's build upon the foundation and make something great. I know this was kind of random. I will definitely be going back to more detailed code breakdown stuff. I did a full video with um, Dev, actually. We're going to have that out later this week. I'm super excited about that. Make sure you guys are subscribed. That's going to be a really cool video where we go over my authentication, parts of it, why it was bad, and we're going to have a long video where you can see us figuring this stuff out live in real time. We got like an hour and a half of footage, gonna have a lot to cut down there, but it's gonna be really cool. And I'm also gonna be doing some code breakdowns in Svelte and some more really cool stuff there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I will see you again very, very soon.